day, my name is Angelo. This is Nishan Voice Tower, your most preferred YouTube channel. How have we been? As for we over here, we've been doing perfectly all right. I hope um, everything is moving on cool with um, us, especially as um, the political season heightens. All right, yes, it's the festive period, and as we gear up for uh, the festive period, of course, politicians are also gearing up for a spending spree. To that regard, I have an expose talking about the ex governor of Zamfara State, Al Haji Abdulaziz Abubakar Yari. Um, Abdulaziz Abubakar Yari was governor of Zamfara State from 2011 to um, sometime 2019. All right, and um, in this uh, in these years, Abdulaziz Yari allegedly racked up lots of debts for the already poor state like Zamfara State. And this is the reason why we feel he shouldn't even be absorbed into government anymore. All right. But um, to our utmost dismay, Abdulaziz Abubakar Yari is still a serving senator um, representing Zamfara West um, Senatorial District. That is what I always said. All right. Um, the rich continues to become richer and the poor get impoverished. But the expose, furthermore, shows his involvement in a spending spree in three countries. Okay. Now, we will uh, term it as um, ex Zamfara has been exposed how ex Zamfara State Governor Abdulaziz Abubakar Yari allegedly squandered $4 million in the United Kingdom all in one day and went further to lavish $18.2 million on luxury overseas shopping in four months. All right, now um, that is the point of this expose. So, you will uh, have details of uh, millions of dollars. Um, dollars that he spent in different countries you're going to have details of thousands of dollars that he allegedly spent on frivolities uh, not even on governance or on things that would help spearhead governance in his state bank documents detailing curious debits and credits on the bank accounts of former governor of zamfara state alhaji abdelaziz abubakar yari while he was governor in 2016 exposes him as a fraudster and a looter who looted his state with impunity. Abdulaziz Yari, a member of the All Progressives Congress, APC, who is currently a senator representing Zamfara West Senatorial District, was governor of the minerals rich but impoverished states between 2011 and 2019. Documents obtained by our sources include bank details from his first bank account number 20309795162 domiciled at number two on when a close maitama abuja a careful scrutiny of the bank details showed a curious frequency of debits and credits in u.s dollars the spotlight on the bank transactions zeroed in on 2015 2016 and 2017 when abdelaziz yari was allegedly governor of zamfara state the bank papers showed a bizarre pattern of payments showing a man on a spending spree overseas. For instance, while he was a serving governor of Zamfara State in 2016, Abdelaziz Abubakar Yari practically shut down Harold's, an exclusive shopping mall in Highbrow, London, where the rich and wealthy flaunt the debt of their pockets. On October 24, 2016, Abdelaziz Yari, while as sitting governor, made out eight different payments at Harrods, all debited from his first bank account in the sums of 124,918.85 US dollars, 387,947.80 US dollars, 533,994.85 US dollars 606,199.30 US dollars 1,046,384.85 US dollars 894,607.70 dollars 150,727.95 US dollars and 267,683.25 US dollars, 
all totaling to 4 million 11,459 US dollars. That was the amount Abdulaziz Yari allegedly spent and splodged at Harold's in one day of shopping spree. In the same year, Abdulaziz Yari on October 20th allegedly paid out the sum of 62,016.63 US dollars twice in New Jersey and Washington, United States for undisclosed transactions. On October 18th, the same year, Abdulaziz Yari's account at the first bank, Maitama, was debited allegedly with the sum of a chunky sum of $3,050,000 for something captured as purchases in Mont Blanc McLean, an exotic luxury that holds lots of expensive accessories for men, a store that holds everything fashion can talk about in the recent world in Virginia, United States. Besides expensive wristwatches, Mont Blanc is home to high profile gift items, including pens, perfumes, etc. The bank documents did not break down items purchased by the Nigeria's shopper in chief, Abdulaziz Yari, who happens to be the then governor of Zamfara State. The following day, October 19th, the sum of 198,087.50 US dollars was allegedly spent for some services and products in Fogo de Chao in Washington, United States. Abdulaziz Yari's propensity to squander what the investigators flagged as public money laundered into his personal account was not limited to London and the United States alone. In one day on December 13, 2016, Abdulaziz Yari allegedly paid out the sums of 441,121.50 US dollars and 30,195 US dollars to Nadi Medical Company in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Investigators are at a fix to tell whether the huge sums were for his personal medical bill or for all the sick people in his state. However, the fact that he was paying from his personal account further suggests that the huge funds were for his personal care and attention and those of his close family members. The spending spree and pattern showed that Abdelaziz Yari lived larger than life while presiding over poor Zamfara State, a state with poor infrastructure, cracked up by insecurity. Still on Abdulaziz Yari's Arabian adventure on September 14, 2016, Yari's first bank account was debited with the sum of 1989071 US dollars and credited to Intercontinental Hotel Medina all in Saudi Arabia, a bill that looked like a community bill in a classy hotel. Earlier on September 26, 2016, Yari's lust for luxury was satiated with a handsome bill of $4,679,388.32 US dollars from the same first bank account in favor of Park Heights, a five-star hotel in Dubai. On the same day, Yari was still shopping in the United States, probably from the comfort of his hotel room in Dubai, as his account got a debit hit of $3,083,700 US dollars in favor of Louis Vuitton in New York. Altogether, in a space of four months between September and December 2016, Abdulaziz Yari allegedly spent a princely 18,204,609 US dollars on shopping, hotel accommodation, medical bills, and luxury alone. But while he was living large overseas, Zamfara State was swamped in poverty, tagged among states with the lowest internally generated revenue, IGR, growing debt overhang, and low GDP. 
Abdulaziz Yari allegedly left the state, Zamfara state, in debt and poverty. Zamfara further recorded debt and debt increase of 109.55% within the period of his shopping spree. As of December 31st, 2015, Zamfara state's debt stock had risen from 46.28 billion naira to 96.98 billion naira all right welcome back if you're just joining us this is still nation voice tower your most preferred channel all right that was the expose there um calling out former governor abdulaziz abubakar yari of zamfara state now um aside the fact that the present governor of zamfara state um governor dauda has been making positive moves to bring on board the illegal transactions accumulated by not only the government of Abdulaziz Yari, but um, also the government of a former governor, Bello Matawale. These two people actually impoverished Zamfara state. And um, this present governor, although now embattled, is yet to unravel completely what illegality these two governors um, compelled Zamfara to, uh, you know, to. All right. Now, um, this expose is not just for us to hear the amount of money, the cash involved and all that. But it should also get to those involved to outrightly explain the reasons why people like Abdulaziz Yari should not be seen close to governance, no matter what party is uh, spearheading governance, all right? The truth remains that politicians will, will continue to enrich themselves until things are done about politicians or where there are evidences of politicians embezzling funds. Things should be done by anti-graft agencies various um, security agencies to bring these people to book even while they are in power because um, when you allegedly allow immunity to cover up a particular individual then when he leaves office I guess he must have you know made a way for soft landing for himself Abdulaziz Abubakar Yari was part of the people we are not accusing him we are calling him out he is part of the governors who impoverished the Zafara state and he should face the music for such uh, you know illegal activity spending up to 18.2 million in few days and i'm um, spending four million dollars in a day is um it is too much a spending spree for somebody who actually swore to uphold the accountability part of governance for a particular people all right second in the list of my updates is uh, the fact uh, that um i have daniel bwala daniel bwala was a spokesperson of the defunct Atiku Okoa, formal presidential campaign council. He is also a legal practitioner and somebody who has also been a member of the APC in the past. All right. According to Daniel Bwala, uh, talking about the 2023 general elections, he believes that Nigeria has witnessed the worst electoral judgment ever in this electoral season. He, according to Bwala, he said um, conflicting decisions have made you know the day of the of all the tribunals sitting in different states especially those who have already given their judgment all right from the court of appeal against the people's democratic party also according to daniel Bola. according to him he said these judges did not show any obedience to the principle of law of law whatsoever all right now let us uh state in for daniel Bola, a former member of the defunct atiku okowa presidential campaign council from 1999 there have been evolution you know evolutionary uh, uh development if i have to use that word but in 2023 elections we've had the worst of co judgments of court we have not had so much of conflicting decision by one tier of government because if you look at the election tribunal this year you would notice that there were inconsistency in one or two tribunal cases at the trial level, but and then probably at the Supreme Court one or two complaint. But at the Court of Appeal is where almost all of these conflicting judgments that have so far you know been uh, experienced. And for the records, the Court of Appeal is one court, so even if it were judgment delivered in Meduguri, let's say division uh, the Court of Appeal. And it can be relied upon in Lagos as the court, the same court, not that you are addressing the lordship, their lordships and saying, my lord, your learned brother in Medugri decided this. No, my lord, this court, because the court is one. 
And so surprisingly, you would think that the court should be abreast of the various judgments it delivered and be consistent in its judgment, especially when the judgments are founded on the principles of the law. Facts can differ, but the principle of law is constant. And wherever you turn, when the principle falls on a direction, the judgment has to be consistent and constant. But we have seen conflicting decisions of the Court of Appeal, especially where it affected the People's Democratic Party. And I'll tell you what, there was the judgment in by the Court of Appeal in Plateau State that removed the governor. And the appellate court delved into the merit of a pre-election matter, and they said it also qualified as a pre-election and main election, and they delivered the judgment. The same Court of Appeal in Eboyne State, the, 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 the case of pre-election was canvassed. The Court of Appeal in Eboyne said it's a pre-election matter. We do not delve into pre-election. In Benue State, pre-election matter was raised regarding forged uh, form of INEC. The court in Benue said it is a pre-election matter. In fact, we are guided by the judgment of the Supreme Court. We stay constant in it. In all these places where judgments were delivered, either in sustenance of pre-election matter in tribunal or in the rejection of the pre-election case in tribunal, the beneficiaries have been the People's Democratic Party. Awesome. This is where the concern comes. But you see, uh, Mr. Abati, Section 287 of the, Supre of the Constitution of Nigeria makes it clear, the position of stare decisis and judicial precedent, that the judgment of the Supreme Court is binding throughout the Federation of Nigeria on all authorities and courts that are subordinate to it. In this 2023 election, the Supreme Court of Nigeria settled the issue of pre-election matter. In the case brought by APM, in the case brought by APC, in the case brought by Labour, we are pre-election matters were canvassed and they were joined together with fundamental provision of the Constitution to suggest to the Supreme Court that this is so germane that you cannot close your eyes from it. And the Supreme Court made strong pronouncement, in fact with anger and vehemence, that anybody who is not a member of a political party, or even if it were a member of a political party, where the case border on pre-election, it cannot be brought that that said party, that said party is a busybody. I have also heard, well, Mr. Abati, people said, but in 2019, in Yari's case, the, the, the Supreme Court sacked uh, uh, APC, why is PDP crying? And they failed to realize that in 2019, apart from the fact that it was a decision decided on the old order of both the amendment to the Constitution and the Electoral Act, it was a case brought by a member of all progressive Congress. It was intra-party matter. In this year, Supreme Court said, you are a busybody to try to question. In fact, they even said, even where the legality of what you are challenging is genuine, it falls short of two things. Number one, Time required for the determination of the matter. And number two, the matter is not an election tribunal matter. If you look at section 34, the grounds for which election victory can be challenged is clear. But, and you will see, there is no disobedience to the court judgment as a ground. There is no, even the issue, for example, in Plateau State, Mr. Abati, when they say there was no valid uh, uh, Congress, that they didn't even have a structure in the first place that will warrant for them to sponsor a candidate. What is the structure of a party as recognized by law, by the constitution of the parties, and by the various decisions of even the Supreme Court? The National Working Committee is the life, the soul, and the spirit of a political party. When you sue, you sue the National Working Committee. As long as the National Working Committee exists, even if there is no any structure at all in a state, it cannot give rise to the decision of validation by the court that there is no uh, uh, conduct of uh, uh, Congress. In the first place, even the order that they raised and said it was violated, the order was obeyed. All right, um, that was that from Daniel Bwala. Well, I would say anytime he speaks, I take it with a pinch of salt because he was a member of the APC and now a member of the People's Democratic Party. All right, I would always maintain the fact that these two parties act alike because the same politicians are the same people who, you know, who uh, shuttle between these two parties in the form of defections. If you have the mind and the and you have the 
courage and you have the the credibility let me say to defect from one party to the other for conflicting reasons or conflicting interests and you can't fix the party where you came from you have to be watched closely although although there are cases where there are reasons for you to really defect to another party but we always say loyalty supersedes everything but in the case where your defection was very genuine then we can actually applaud you for uh, for speaking that is the case of daniel bola his defection to the pdp was something he believes was a lifetime opportunity for him to showcase what he can do as a politician as an, and as a legal practitioner right so when he speaks about the elections in 2023 you should be able to deduce that whatever he says of course forget the fact that he's a partisan but whatever daniel bola says haven't been you know a name to reckon with in the nigerian political periphery or political platform then you will be able to or we should i would urge us all to always you know uh, take what he says uh, with uh, you know uh, lots of belief because um, these are those people who speak the truth when the truth is needed in politics especially as it concerns the nigerian masses yeah finally i have a video that has um members of the Ijo youth council the Ijo people of bielsa state and partly river state have been embattled over time aside the fact that um one of their sons, Simnelai Fubara, the governor of River State, is embattled by his godfather and predecessor, Nyesan Ezem Wanwiki. The Ijo people have been embattled over time, aside the fact that they have um, oil bunkering and issues pertaining to you know, um, oil and petroleum in their locality. The people of Ijo have, um, come, out, have, have come out to uh, come up to really, um, you know, uh, to attest to the fact that they are ready to fight uh, fraud, especially fraud coming up or erupting from the NDDC, the Niger Delta Development Commission, all right, to that effect, um, the Ijo Youth Council President has, um, on behalf of the Ijo Youths, decided to partner with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to clamp down on politicians who use the NDDC to perpetrate fraud and money laundering in those sectors. Please stay tuned for um, that interview or that video where the Ijo Youth Council to their representative made this known. The NDDC is one of the biggest interventionist agencies that has been given to the people of the Niger Delta. The inception of its establishment till date, we find it very difficult to even identify signature projects that are being carried out by this NDDC. We understand basically that the NDDC that was established for the rigorous development to cover up the infrastructural deficiency and human capital empowerment has been turned to a political cash cow. We understand the amount of money being projected in the NDDC. But if you go into the entire Niger Delta, you understand that it is all abandoned project, abandoned project, abandoned project. Fine, new board has been uh, inaugurated, being headed by the chairman and the, the MD and the CEO, Dr. Sam Ubuku. Our expectations are that under the Samil led NDDC, we are going to have signature projects that will add value to the people of the Niger Delta. And we are also using this medium to call Mr. President that please call his federal appointees to give the NDDC a free hand. Let the federal intervention be limited. Let projects that will be done in the NDDC not be dictated by those at the federal level. Let it be that it is the board and its management that come up with projects that will benefit the people. Because of the federal interference, NDDC to a larger extent has failed the people. The purpose of which the NDDC was established has been defeated. We understand, and that is why as a council we are partnering with the anti-graft agencies 
I Y C under my leadership, under my watch, wouldn't be backing on unnecessary protest. We will be engaging with the inter anti graft agencies to be checkmating and monitoring the excesses of those that are managing our common funds and resources with the results and the level of progress we have made we believe that uh, we will be able to checkmate the excesses of our interventionist agencies and we believe that the current administration leadership of the NDDC are going to establish all right um that was that well um youth councils all over nigeria are putting heads together to see how they could you know um yeah uh, uh, pledge support or you know merge support with the federal government to combat crime this time around the NDDC and its operations concern states that are domiciled in the south south and that sh should um, be the reason why the Ijo Youth Council through their president have decided to you know merge support uh, or merge their you know their own strength with that of the EFCC in order to clamp down on politicians who have used the EFC, the NDDC, I beg your pardon, to launder billions of naira. Gossi Lakbabio is a culprit to this. We are not accusing him. These documents are in the public space. He's somebody that uh, actually is culpable of uh, the fact that the NDDC is not doing well today. Billions of naira that were taken away from the NDDC and, um, uh, you know, other sectors affiliated to this particular ministry or sector would be traced back to Goshu Lakpabio, even while he was Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs. Right, so that is that on that particular update. I hope you enjoyed our updates together. Before I call it quits here, I would love to urge you to please like and share this video. Don't forget to drop a comment for us in the comment section. If you're watching me for the first time, please tap the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you'll be able to see me promptly when I drop a new update. Wouldn't you love that? See you next time. Bye.